Hey everybody, Hayden Dingman here for PC World, and today we are taking a look at the Razer Nari Ultimate. And I hope it's pronounced Nari, not Nari. I don't know. It's a little bit weird. We don't usually do a, uh, a headset video review because uh, you can't hear it, and that's kind of a problem. Um, but this is a particularly interesting example. This is a $200 headset. Uh, let's get that out of the way first. Um, the reason it is $200 is because there are haptics inside of this headset. Now Razer is not the first one to do this. Mad Cats, I think, had the Freak 4D a couple of years ago, um, which proclaimed some haptic technology. Uh, I also reviewed something called, uh, I think it was a, a GX Gaming Cavamanis. Uh, a couple of years ago that also had haptics. But yeah, this is the first haptic enabled headset that I've used that doesn't feel like just a, a dumb gimmick. So basically, what does that mean? Well, uh, inside of this headset, there are drivers that will shake <laughs> the Nari Ultimate on your head uh, in response to any bass frequencies. So uh, they call this the HyperSense technology. It's uh, It's been developed in conjunction with Low Felt, which is a, uh, a an LFE effects company. Um, and yeah, across the 20 hertz to 200 hertz range or that, that base range, anytime it gets frequencies for that into the headset, it'll shake. Um, it also does this in a, uh, it has a it has stereo support. Uh, so if there's a, a loud explosion off to your left, maybe left side will shake on your head. It is fascinating. Um, Razer will give you all sorts of uh, uh, claims about why they did it. Um, hey, did you know that you actually respond faster to touch than you do to audio? Um, I'm sure that's true. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. Uh, really, it's just kind of a cool effect. Um, I've been using it in games. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Forza Horizon 4 this week uh, because of the review. And so imagine, for instance, uh, you've got a, a growling engine, and you're running across a field, you smash through a stone fence. Uh, those are three distinct bass noises. And you will get layers of all three in the headset, uh, in the haptics at the same time. So you'll you'll get like the constant rumble of the engine. Uh, you'll get the the tires as they slide across the grass. So you might feel them go into the left, then go into the right. And then when you crash into that stone fence, wherever that happens, you'll feel that on the headset. Um, so it's a really sophisticated implementation of this this haptic technology. Um, it's similar, I think, to the uh, the Xbox One controller um, and the way that it does the triggers. If you lose traction in Forza Horizon 4, you can feel that in the triggers because the haptics will actually simulate that feel. Uh, very similar thing going on in the Nari Ultimate. Um, you will be able to feel things uh, like crashing through that stone wall, those explosions, whatever. So yeah, it makes it a little bit more than a gimmick. Razer's big thing is immersion here, uh, that that perennial buzzword. And yeah, I, I will say that it actually does, uh, if, you, if you can slip into it and stop noticing, you know, the headset shaking on your head, uh, it does actually enhance that immersion. Uh, you can feel those explosions a lot better. Uh, you can feel the music. That's the one that's really surprised me. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying listening to bass heavy music in these. Uh, you get like that, that vroom, 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 vroom. I don't know, it's, it's silly and it's dumb, but uh, I'm actually really enjoying it. I've pretty much been using these exclusively for the last uh, a week or so now. So there also are some smart, uh, some smart features in here. So we have a, a chat mix on the back, uh, always important, uh, mute button. And then uh, over here on the, the right ear cup, you have the dongle slot. Uh, that's a feature that I always like because as somebody who gets a lot of wireless headsets in for review, I cannot tell you how many now are completely useless because I've lost this dumb little dongle somewhere. Um, so yeah, you just slot that back into the bottom when you're done, pretty easy. Battery life is okay. Uh, I think it's about uh, 10 hours with the lights on, if I remember correctly, uh, with the lights and haptics on. Uh, you also have a 3.5 millimeter pass through. Um, if you use that, you don't get any of the haptic effects, but you also don't need the battery charge. It'll just work as a pass through. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, one more feature. Um, these are actually filled with cooling gel. Uh, this is not the first time that we've seen this. And in fact, it's not even the first headset from Razer that we've seen this in. Razer has the Kraken V2 coming out this year also. Uh, they also have cooling pads. Um, it's interesting. It's kind of a, uh, I don't wanna say underwhelming, but it's a little bit underwhelming uh, insofar as it's really only gonna stay cool for about 20 minutes. Uh, it does cool back off fast once you take it off, uh, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes off your head. You'll start to feel that coolness again, um, but it's definitely not 
as interesting as some of the active cooling headsets that we've seen uh, on the horizon, but you know, a little bit more comfort. Uh, and I will say this is probably the most comfortable headset Razer has ever made. Uh, you do have the floating headband, which they've only used on, a, I think, one other headset, the Razer Thresher, uh, which I don't think anybody even bought. So uh, for all intents and purposes, this is the first Razer headset with that floating headband design. They did a really good job. It feels durable. Uh, it's very comfortable on the head. Um, so yeah, just a, an all around interesting headset. As I said, we wouldn't usually do a video review for a headset. You can't hear anything. Uh, we tried to put it on the table and blast music through it to see if it would vibrate. It, it doesn't, it's not that strong. It is a pretty cool idea, this, this haptic enabled headset. Um, this PC has traditionally been a little stiffed on that front. Uh, we can use a controller obviously, but you don't really see haptics in mouse and keyboards for somewhat obvious reasons. Keyboards are gigantic and, and with mice, you don't really want something vibrating when you're trying to aim. Headset seems like maybe a natural fit. Uh, the only problem is, as I said, that $200 price point, they do make a haptic free version of the Nari, uh, the Nari Elite, which is $150. Um, I, personally, I think the haptics are worth the extra $50, but I could easily see somebody saying, well, $200 is a lot to spend on a headset these days, especially, with stuff like the G533 down in that $130, $140 price range. So it's interesting. Um, we'll see if it spreads or if this is a one-off from Razer. Uh, as always, they are a very experimental company. And uh, I don't know, that's fun. I look forward to seeing all these weird Razer projects, even if none of them really catch on.